God. Praise God. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, the Bible teaching program where we exalt, we edify, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here we also call sinners to repentance through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we go into today's um, lesson, uh, during the week uh, I was being notified that um, uh, many of our videos on social media getting to their thousands. Uh, but we want you to also come to Eternal Food uh, TV uh, because here you will have access to more Christian videos and movies. All right? So share that link with your friends and loved ones. Amen. Today, we are going to discuss the earthly benefits of salvation. The earthly benefits of salvation. And a case study is going to be Rahab. Rahab, the shady lady of Jericho. Uh, that story is in the book of Joshua, chapter 6. If you want to read it, I encourage you to, to do so. Uh, but before we go, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for you have the whole world in your hand. Thank you because there is none like you. Oh, none even comes close. You are God and there is no other. And we honor you for who you are. You have all the power, yet you do not misuse your power. We honor you, dear, dear Jesus. We have come to learn from you. Father, teach us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Like I said, the topic is the earthly benefits of salvation. And our case study is Rahab. And our foundation text is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, which starts from 9 and we stop at, at 10. The epistle uh, to the people of Thessalonica. 1 Thessalon Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 and follow. I'm going to read in a different version. I'm not going to use my King James. All right. I hope you like that. It was not God's intention that we experience is anger, but that we obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake in this life, hallelujah, or asleep in death, we will live together with him. Praise God. Praise God. Now, people, when you talk to them about Jesus coming to Jesus, giving, giving their souls to Jesus, they look at you like, what are you talking about? Why? Because for most people that have come across in Western countries, especially, they have their car, they have a job, uh, they have a house that they're paying mortgages on, or whatever, or mortgage or mortgages, depending on the number of the houses. And they can go out and buy clothes and shoes. And they are like, I'm cool. I'm fine. I don't need Jesus. Really? Really? If the problems of life can be solved with um, a, a mortgage, a car, car loan, and um, a job and all that, listen, I would have said, you are right. You don't need Jesus. But... Every problem of life, I was telling a sister two days ago, every problem that manifests, whether as mental or marital or emotional, they have their, their root in the spirit realm. And Jesus is the spiritual medication. That is why I always tell people, if you want your problems fixed, who your life to Jesus? That doesn't mean you won't have any problem. No. But when you have Jesus, who is the spiritual medication, you can withstand any other forms of problems that the devil may bring to you or the world may bring to you. So let's look at the benefit of giving your life to Jesus Christ. 
the earthly one. Now there is eternal one, whereby you go to heaven, you don't you don't go to the lake of fire. But let's talk about right here. All right. So taking from um, Rahab's story, Rahab lived in Jericho. She was the shady lady of Jericho. She's a prostitute. And the news came that Israel was on her way to taking over the uh, promised land, Canaan. And fast forward to chapter 6 of the book of Joshua. Rahab, uh, uh, um, she took in two spies from the camp of the children of Israel. And she hid them from being destroyed. And when they were leaving, she asked them to be merciful to her, even as she had been kind to them. And they, gave, they said, the scarlet cord with which you let us out of the window of your house uh, to make us escape, just tie that scarlet uh, rope to your window. And when we come, we destroy the city, but we won't destroy you. So let's see what Rahab was saved from. Number one, just like Rahab, if you give your life to Jesus, the first thing you begin to experience is that you are saved from a foul word, a foul word. If you don't think that this word stinks, you've got some problems. Seriously, if you don't think something is wrong with the world, then you need some help. The world has gone bananas, okay? So God wants to save you from this foul, molested, smelly world. A believer is saved from getting caught up in the, watch this, malicious, merciless, and manipulative rat race of the world's operating system as the only way to get to the top or outdo your neighbor. You see, that's what they do. They are trying, they are in competition to outdo their neighbor. So nobody helps anybody. You see, a saved soul, a believer, a genuine believer, knows their provision, protection, and, pro and promotion, and other good things of life can only come through Christ Jesus. As a result, true believers are not ruffled in competitive environments. Oh no. You meet a child of God and everybody is trying to eat everybody, dog eats dog as they say, and they are just maligning one another. A, a child of God will be out of that madness. Why? Because they know that their promotion is from God, you see. Rahab was calm, unruffled, like the rest of Jericho. Jericho, uh, the king gave the order, shut the gates, uh, do this, do that. Rahab was not bothered. Why? Because she's not in the rat race to save her own life. She already got a word of promise from the camp of Israel that she will be spared. The same with you and I. If you give your life to Jesus, you won't have to get yourself messed up with the rat race of this world. Look at the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the religious people in the time of Jesus. They were the marketing monks of the temple. Guess what? They envied Jesus. They ended up uh, nominating Jesus, if you will, for crucifixion, you see. And these were the religious people. But even though they were in the, in the temple, God was not in their heart. So if you see somebody that engages in unbiblical behaviors, it doesn't matter their, uh, their title in the church. No, they don't have Jesus in their heart. If they had been saved genuinely, they would have been saved from this, the, the, the thinking mentality of the world. Look at John the Baptist. That was a genuine believer who had been saved from a foul world, you see. They said, John, the man called Jesus that you baptized the other day is on the other side, and his disciples, they, they are baptizing people. And he, 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 people are going to him. He's more popular than you now. John the Baptist said, he must increase, and I must decrease. You see, 
That is the mindset of a genuine believer. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Each of you should continue to live in whatever situation the Lord has placed you and remain as you were when God first called you. This is my rule for all the churches, you see. If you are, if you, if you are saved, if you give your life to Jesus, it doesn't matter if God has called you as a full-time homemaker, you will be totally confident and satisfied and find fulfillment in what God has called you to do. If you're a pharmacist, a plumber, it doesn't matter, a painter, a driver, it doesn't matter. You see, Jesus will save you from a foul world, the system of thinking of this world. Psalm 121, verse 1 to 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 121, verses 1 to 2. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You see, that's a believer speaking right there. A saved soul. They know where to look. We look up to God, not to the system of this world. To sail along with God is to stay atop the world. That is so beautiful. To sail along with God is to stay atop the world. Moving on. You are not only saved from a foul world, you are also saved from a fierce wolf. There's a wolf out there trying to eat up everybody. Satan is an intransigent enemy, very stubborn. He's committed to destroying every life. Listen, you say, really? And unbelievers too? Satan doesn't love anybody. You can't give what you don't have. Satan does not have love. He cannot give love. Satan is out to destroy you, is out to destroy me, is out to destroy Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, everybody. You see, his persistency to achieve this sinister goal has not changed. And that is why his way of destroying some people is to divert their attention into false religion, you see. Since the time of Adam, he, the, the devil has been doing this. However, hallelujah, when Jesus came on the history page of humanity, hallelujah, he defeated the devil, glory to God, as the representative of mankind. By the death of Jesus on the cross and by his resurrection, praise God, on the third day, the devil's back was broken. This means... Whoever believes in Jesus and the work of salvation, which Jesus did, is out of Satan's sphere of destruction. Listen up. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. That is a promise that you can still stand upon today, tomorrow, until the end of age. I'm telling you, if you are a genuine believer, you give your life to Jesus, the devil won't be able to destroy you. Oh, no. It's not going to happen. Oh, no. I won't be looking at a bully to mess up with my, my, with my children. It's not going to happen. Oh, no. And look at Jesus. He's the father of all fathers. He will not be looking at you and let the devil destroy you. If you are his own, oh, no, it's not going to happen. Forget it. While a believer will not live a totally troubled-free life, because we still live in this world, which is under the sway of the devil, there's a complete divine assurance that a believer will not, underscore that, will not be conquered by the gate of hell. It's not possible. The scarlet cord that was given to Rahab saved Rahab's life. Because the scarlet cord sounds like red to me, that cord marked Rahab's house. Rahab lost her house, but she did not lose her life, you see. And she did not lose her loved ones. Once they, uh, they saw the scarlet cord, the children of Israel went into that house and removed Rahab 
and all our loved ones. And then they destroyed Jericho, you see. Joseph was another example of a true believer in the Old Testament. He experienced many troubles. He was betrayed by his own brothers. He was lied against by his, his um, master's uh, wife. But guess what? Joseph could not be destroyed inwardly. He could not be destroyed on the inside. He reached where God said he would reach, you see. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5. First Peter chapter 1 verse 5 says, Through faith, you have been protected by God's power for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You see, a salvation is coming when Jesus comes, which is there will be no more sin. The presence of sin will be removed because there will be no sin in heaven, you see. So even until that time, the Bible says, we have been protected by God's power, you see. Psalm 34, 19. Psalm 34, 19 is a very popular one. If you are a Bible student, you know that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, put in parentheses, the godly. But the Lord delivers him out of them all, you see. It doesn't mean you won't have to go through uh, troubles. Maybe you are sick or a loved one is sick. Um, um, you lost a job or something like that but through it all if you are a believer you will not be broken by any of those a saved soul may be troubled by the devil but a saved soul will not be troubled by the devil say that again Josephine a saved soul may be troubled by the devil but a saved soul will not be troubled by the devil says the word of God, not Zion. Amen. Moving on. Saved from fleshly works. So you are saved from a foul world. You are saved from a fierce wolf. And the third benefit is that you are saved from fleshly work. The Holy Spirit, supernatural. Please, come close. You need to hear this, okay? Because this is how you know the difference between a genuine believer and um, somebody that just goes to church just for just going saved, okay? You, you need to stop the, the confusion. Let's clear it out. The Holy Spirit supernaturally removes the ability of a believer to enjoy sinning. You won't be able to sin or enjoy it or feel comfortable with sin. If you're a believer, you won't be comfortable with sinning. Because the, the, the natural ability to enjoy sin has been removed by the Holy Spirit when you became a Christian, you see. Rather, he replaces it with the supernatural strength to say no to sin. Unless that believer wants to deliberately disobey God. A genuine follower of Christ becomes more conscious of what sin is in thought, in speech, and deeds. As, for, as 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You see, I remember watching a politician on, on the TV a few weeks back, Lord have mercy, we have so many of them in the United States. And this politi politician really is, is a house of life. I mean, and you could see that this individual was lying. And I was just, be I began to get angry. And now I, I couldn't stand this politician. And the Holy Spirit said, that's hate. And I was like, oh, Father, forgive me, you see. And, <laughs> you know, I had, to, I had to ask for forgiveness. But before, I wouldn't have been sensitive that that was hate, you see. So when you become a child of God, you are more sensitive. You know what is a sin. A genuine believer will not envy, gossip, lie, or hate somebody, or, or any other bad things. You will not consistently do all, all that. 
as a way of life. No. That is why Jesus said, by their fruit you will know them, you see. You will not do anything that is against the word of God as a way of life, if you're a genuine believer. Or, or the, whatever we have, the propensity of the human nature to, to, to words, to, to, com, to commit sin and act against God's word. You won't be able to do that. Rahab never went back to prostitution. Oh no. Mm. David, after the drama with Bathsheba, that he, he stole Bathsheba from her husband and killed Bathsheba's husband, he never, he never took another woman like that anymore. Oh no, he didn't. You see, Simon Peter, who will cut your mama out and cut your ear off, he stopped doing that after Jesus restored him. You see, he became so gentle. Uh, son of Tarsus, a religious terrorist. He was the ISIS and Al-Qaeda of his time. After he became a believer, we never read anywhere in the Word of God that son of Tarsus was, uh, that he went back to his religious fanaticism. No. He actually became the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, you see. So when you have been saved, you don't go back to your old way of life as a lifestyle. No, because Jesus has saved you from fleshly work. Let's go to Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. Moreover, this is God speaking now. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, that is, a stubborn heart. The Lord said he will remove it and give us a soft heart, you, you see, that is soft toward God, that is loving toward God and toward the word of God, you see. So if you call yourself a Christian and you still find it difficult to, to, to live according to the Bible and it doesn't bother you, a sister was telling me that one brother in their church uh, was messing around with another lady. And he's married. And he said, well, I love her. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I told that sister, I said, tell that brother he's not born again. If you are born again and you fall into sin, oh my goodness, you will expose yourself before anybody uh, gets to know about it and to say, I will, tell, I will tell your pastor. You will go to your pastor yourself or to the church and tell, and tell about what you have done because the Holy Spirit will not allow you to rest. Oh no, it's not going to happen. Why? Because you have been given a new spirit. You have been given a new heart. You have been saved from fleshly work. To live in complete surrender to God is to cease from being an offender to God. Let's say that again because we need it. To live in complete surrender to God is to cease from being an offender to God. Moving on. You are saved from future wrath. This alone is a, is a big lesson on its own, but I pray the Holy Spirit will help me. Destruction was looming over Jericho because God has commanded Joshua and Israel to destroy the pagan city. Do you know the world is not different from old Jericho? Oh, no, there's no difference. The world is all Jericho. And Jesus is coming to destroy the satanic civilizations of this world. Oh, he's coming to destroy it. So he can establish a world in which righteousness dwell. In the end, it will be one Lord, one faith, one baptism. As it is written in Ephesians 4, 5. Amen. We know how do we know this? We know this spiritual truth because Jesus gave a prediction of the signs to look out for. Believers in Jesus who have the assurance of being his disciple by the presence of the Holy Spirit in their hearts have nothing to worry about. We have nothing to worry about as believers, you see, because we will not take part in the judgment that is coming Upon those who have rejected Jesus. Oh, we are so out of this place. Before that happens. Rahab 
did not perish with Jericho. Oh no. We are the modern day Rahab. Okay? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we are not going to perish with this world. It's not going to happen. Oh no. Every child of God has this rock solid assurance too. John 3 36. Listen to this. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God abides on him. I didn't write that. The word of God says so. If you don't have Jesus in your life, wrath is looming upon your head. But that can change. Revelation 20 verse 15. Revelation 20 15. Listen to this. All right. For those of you who do not believe that this world is going to be destroyed, listen now. Okay. If you don't like how God wants to run the show, you may want to go and create your own planet. But I don't think so. So you better listen up and save yourself from the coming wrath. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Put a stop there right, right there, Josephine. Let's go back and read that again. Revelation 20, 15. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You said you believe in that? I do. Literally, yes. Listen. Sin will lure you to the bay of seduction and then toss you to the pit of destruction. Sin will lure you to the bay of seduction and then toss you to the pit of, of destruction. Don't let the devil gain your soul. Don't. So what are the earthly benefits of salvation? You are saved from a foul world. You no longer swim in the world's sewer of corrupt living. You are saved from a fierce wolf. You are delivered from satanic molestations and harassments. You are saved from fleshly work. You no longer have to be a weak knee individual when temptation comes you have the divine empowerment to run away from sin or say no to temptations and you are saved from future wrath you have a definite assurance of eternal bliss i've decided to conclude this message with a powerful song written by elisha hoffman in 1878 if you're a believer listen to me come on close here is your line in that song are you walking daily by the savior's side do you rest each moment in the crucified that is jesus when the bridegroom cometh will your robes be white huh Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? Ask yourself those questions. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you? Or you are just going to church to meet your friends on Sundays to show up? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Ask yourself if your Christianity is practiced through Christ's purity. If not, you are deceiving yourself. It doesn't matter if you are the pastor of your church. You are deceiving yourself. But you can repent now and begin to walk with Jesus in the real sense. Amen. Now, if you are a non-believer, here is your line of the song. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power. Huh? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Your soul can be cleaned. It doesn't matter how dirty you feel, how bad you've been, 
your soul can be clean. Oh yeah. I ask you the question, is your soul clean? No unclean thing we enter to heaven, says the Bible. It's not going to happen. We, the God of the Bible, we believers in the God of the Bible, we serve a holy, absolutely perfect, holy God. So nothing unclean we come to heaven. But if you want to come to heaven, and I know you want to, you want your soul cleaned, Jesus is willing to wash you with his blood. Just as he washed me with his blood, I can sleep with peace of mind. I have peace with God. I have peace with people, and I have peace with myself. If you want the same peace of Jesus, he's ready to worship, okay? A link is coming up very shortly. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Follow that link. And from there, you see we are broken it down in steps. We even have some videos to help you to know what to do to get your soul clean through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, your word has gone out. I pray, Lord, that according to your word, it will prosper and do that for which it has been sent. Oh Lord, let every soul that is yet to know you become restless. And those that have known you or those that are going to click on the link to go and meet with you and know Jesus so their soul can be cleansed. Father, let them have your peace. In Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen. And amen. I will see you next week. Only if Jesus has not split the sky open.